you plug one in for t, but what does the output mean? Yeah, you're plugging, that's how you do it. I like that. You plug one in for t, but what does v of one mean? Yeah. It does. So that's what your answer is going to be in form of, but it's going to be the what at what what. No, not the speed. The the velocity one. It's the velocity time one. It's the velocity time one. So yeah. So velocity time one is going to be one squared minus four. So what's that going to be? Three. Negative three. And what's the what's the uh, units? Meters per second. So in this case, what direction is the person going? What, what? South. South. So it's going south because it's negative. Yep. Okay. So then it says the integral from. How do you say that out loud? Actually, for number for b. How do you say that out loud? Can someone tell me what, how you say that out loud? It's the integral of v of t from zero to two. So you're calculating the what under the curve. You're calculating the area under the curve from. 0 to 2. So if you do the area under the curve of the velocity function, what are you calculating? What are you calculating? Yeah, if you're calculating the area under the curve of the velocity function, what do you end up getting? What does that represent? The No, that's the derivative of velocity. If you do the area under the curve of velocity, what do you end up with? The the distance, the distance the, the distance Travel, yes. I need the complete sentence here. The distance traveled. And there's, I'm going to put a little asterisk there. The distance traveled as long as the distance is positive. So we're going to check something here. So when you do this out, what did you have to use? If I, if I said n is 50, what do you have to use? Yeah, do not do that by hand. 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 That'll be a complete waste of time. So when you're doing this on your calculator, you're putting in the function t squared minus 4 with n equals 50. With n equals 50. And then going from what to what? 0 to what? Zero, yeah. zero to two. Oh, I got the negative. Thanks. And then how many rectangles? Fifty. It's minus four. Thank you. So take a look at this, everybody. When you plot Wait, this, you yeah. <laughs> how far have I traveled? Ten million miles. If I go ten million miles to the left and ten million miles back, how far have I traveled overall? Like how long has my journey been? Twenty million miles. But where am I compared to where I started? Zero. So here's the deal. If I go five miles to the left and three miles back, I've traveled eight. The distance traveled is eight. But what's my displacement? Two miles. I am two miles from where I started. So when you do the integral here, when you did this with n equals 50, what does it come out to be? It says, what, negative, negative 5.4128. You end up with negative 5.4128. What does that mean? What units does that have? That is, what units is that? Meters. Meters, yep meters. And so that means you've traveled which direction? South. south. Exactly. South. South. Now let's say I extended this. What does this, this velocity graph goes up, right? So if I started calculating rectangles now, are they going to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis? They're going to be above. So you're moving because you're moving to the north. You're moving to the north. You're moving to the north. Okay. So, so it asks here, uh, what is the sign of each of the following? So if you look at this graph right here, everybody, and you're looking at the area under the curve from 0 to 2, can someone raise their hand and tell me, is the area under the curve from 0 to 2 going to be positive or negative? Positive. That area right here, this area right here is right here. That is above. It's going to be positive. Yay. What about from 2 to 4? Can someone tell me from 2 to 4? Raise your hand. What is it from NASA? What is it from 2 to 4? Negative. Yeah, it's right here, which is going to be? Negative, exactly. So let's call that one negative. What about from 0 to 6? Can someone come up with an answer for 0 to 6? What do you, why is it negative, Caleb? Because the displacement on the bottom is bigger on top. Correct. The green is bigger than the blue. Like, you can clearly see that, right? It's a bad word to use in math, clearly. I actually hate that word because something is either clearly for everybody or if somebody uses the word clearly, it's not clear for some people, and they're like, why did you just kind of insult me? You understand what I mean? Yeah. So in this case, though, I didn't give you a function, but based on the picture, it does look like the green is a lot bigger than the blue. So if you take the green away from the blue, you're going to have a lot of negative left over. So it does look like, in fact, that this is negative. It does look like it's negative. But if you have the function, you can be sure about it, especially since we have these calculators. Now, it gets a little tricky. So let's say, for example, I asked you, what about this one, Caleb? Let's say I asked you for the integral from like 0 to 3 and a half of f of x dx, and I asked you for the sign. 
What happens if I asked you from like zero to three and a half? What would you say? Could you clearly come up with an answer? No. Not really, because if you go to three and a half, what am I asking for? Like here, right? And it's, you just don't know. Like, is this the same area as that? Is this bigger? You don't know. So if I ever ask you relative size, and you'll be like, clearly bigger, right? Like literally what you could do on your paper is you'd be like, cut it out and then move it, right? But if I don't give you the function, you have to be very careful about your analysis. You have to be very careful about your analysis. So here's the thing. I could give you a function and ask you this. So let's say I asked you this right here. I said, knowing what you know about sine, if I asked you for the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine x, what are you going to say the answer is? Zero. Why is it going to be 0? Well, well, not, no, it, you don't have to end at zero. Like it could go up and then it could go down a little bit, right? The integral wouldn't be zero. Ah, there we go. It's because the area under and the area above are the same, so therefore they obliterate each other. It's literally the same thing I just showed you right here. It's the same thing I just showed you right there. Same thing. So the, the lesson here in this last number four is just because you have a tool, just because you have a hammer, which is the using the Riemann sums on your, on your calculator or on your computer, just because you have a hammer doesn't mean you have to use it every time. Like if you know, you know about the symmetry of sine, everybody go like this, yeah. So if I ask you for the integral from 0 to 2 pi, you're going to say it's what? Zero. zero. Exactly. You're going to say it's zero. 